Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with another Daily Race C. Um, starting on my second account from P4. So if you do enjoy these videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button so you won't miss any future videos. So yeah, decided to jump on very early before I get my wisdom tooth and another tooth taken out, which could be quite painful. So decided that it's best to get some content out um, done and in, in the morning, ready to upload in the night, just in case I can't stream for a few days. So yeah, this is a race that I managed to get on. Now we only had time to do one daily race C, and luckily it was a really enjoyable race. So I'm starting from P4. Um, we've got some pretty fast drivers in the lead of the race. And we've also got um, Ollie in front of us, uh, Ollie racing in front of us, and P2, who I don't know what tyres M2 are on. Not sure. But I did know that P1 was definitely on the mediums because I saw it in the practice session. I took note of that. One thing I always say is do make sure you keep an eye on the tyres that people are on. Now, Ollie, I think, had already gone out, so I couldn't tell what tyres he was on. But yeah. P P1 was definitely on the mediums and I spotted that. So going into turn one, try and make sure we warm the tyres up before the braking zone just so we got a bit of traction as we get a really good exit from there. We have a little look up the inside here, but that's not really going to be a move that's going to work. P4, P5 right behind me, put me on the pressure, but I managed to get the front end of my car just up the inside of Ollie Racing there. And we make a really nice move up the inside, holding it tight to the apex and putting ourselves up into P3. So straight away, one position gained. We'll take a little look at that move now. As we go back um, from the chase cam, you see, got on the power really early, got just the front end alongside him, which forced him to have to just go a little bit wide. He gives us the space, we give him the space, and that was a nice clean move up into P3. So now we're following another BMW, and again, this time, I'm pretty sure this driver is on the mediums, um, but the driver behind us, like I say, I think he is possibly on the softs. Um, I wasn't quite sure at this stage, but as the race goes on, it seems to become more and more evident that the driver behind me was on the soft tyres. Um, but P2, he's on the mediums. So you can tell by the way his car's behaving. I can always tell by the way how twitchy a car is and the, the traction. Also, corner and speed. It's very evident when you go through the faster corners whether a car is on the softs or medium tyres because of the way the car behaves. Always try and look out for things like that. But yeah, P1, we do know he's on the medium tyres and he's starting to build up a bit of a gap. You can see... He's almost at the two second mark. He's really building that gap up. He's at 1.7 seconds. So we really need to get a move on here. We do not want to get stuck behind ERM, the ERM driver driving the BMW for too long. But at the moment, there's not much I can do. We're just getting in the slip stream. We're getting a nice pull along this straight. But yeah, we're not really. I had a little look here. You can see I keep going out the slip stream, taking a little look. But yeah not in a position to really throw it up there it would have probably of course an instance so decided to back out try and be a bit more patient here we don't have to be ultra aggressive you know it's a it's 10 lap race and things can happen so making sure that we're a bit patient there as we go down the straight and you can see we got a really nice exit from the final corner and the BMW driver decided to go really aggressive on the defense trying to break that slipstream I stay to the right try and have a little look up the inside here and again too far back not really able to go for a move there and um, very close into the braking zone but again it would have been a little we've just that two temps back where it's just a bit too much to really send one up the inside but as we work our way into this first sector you see staying very close to him we see the driving behind us ollie racing also very close to the rear now this is why i was pretty convinced he was on soft tires because every i just kept noticing his traction was really good and also his cornering speed seemed to be really really good so it was very 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 important that i got past him at that early stage there because now we can hold him up a bit while we're obviously trying to push on to erm and see if we can get past this erm driver but at the moment you can see p1 has got that gap over two seconds and he's driving very well he seems like quite a fast driver so it's going to be very, very difficult to catch him up. We're going to have to really get past P2 as quick as possible. We get a nice exit off this corner. Now we've got to stay as close as possible through, through this section. This is a section where when you're in that dirty air, it just sometimes requires a little lift. As we go to have a little look around the outside, can we send it? We try and send it around the outside. That's not going to work. Luckily, we don't run wide. We keep the braking under control. And now we're going to try and go for a, a nice strong exit from this corner. You can see that Ollie racing behind us in that BMW is so fast through the corners. But we've got a nice run on ERM. He's going to have to go defensive into the braking zone. He see, he's took the defensive line on the left-hand side. I'm going to try and see if we can carry it around the outside. We break as late as we can. We give him the space on the inside. And we take as much of that corner off as we can without getting a penalty. And we do a very nice move to put myself up into P2. Just take a look at this. Very respectful racing. Again, I have to say brilliant racing from all involved here from ollie 
um, racing not to hit the driver who took a different line and from him to give me the space and I gave him the space as well so great to see but looking behind we see Ollie racing sending it up the inside so the ERM driver goes from P2 to P4 in the space of only but one or two corners but looking ahead we've got a penalty for the lead driver he's two seconds in the lead and he's got half second penalty that's going to cost him about six attempts i think because of where the penalty is the penalty zone is so he's not going to lose a massive amount however he is going to lose a little bit so that's giving me the motivation you see we're 2.5 seconds behind at this stage so you know if he loses six seven attempts that's going to put us about 1.8 seconds behind or something like that once he's took his penalty so we're going to try and push now for this lap now we're obviously on the medium tires we know p1's on the medium tires the optimal way of running this race, I think, is four on the medium, six on the soft. That seems to be pretty spot on. You can do a 5-5 five, five divide as well, and that can work really well also. But I think the optimal way seems to be about four or six, and if you can look after tyres, three and seven. But you can see P1 takes that penalty. That's dropping him down a bit. The gap's gone down to 1.6 seconds in the braking zone. So we've definitely gained a good six, seven temps there. As we've got Ollie racing putting us under a bit of pressure also from the rear. You can see he's pushing on in the braking zone. He's got that extra grip. But his tyres are going to start fading, obviously. At about this point now, I think at about the end of lap three, start of lap four, the tyres are going to be pretty even Stevens in terms of mediums versus the soft. The soft tyre does seem to fade quite a bit on this track. It is a track that is very aggressive on the tyre where it always is on GT Sport and especially with this time 7 setting it really does take quite a lot of tyre life out of these tyres so working our way down the straight now just making sure that we're going to go a bit defensive there staying in the middle but yeah he's not going to be in a position to go from Rubio's a little bit too far back there Ollie racing but we go through the chicane attacking that chicane really aggressive you have to really be aggressive through there the track limits are, aren't too strict on GT Sport through that chicane uh, so you can really send it over the chicane and aim to hit the middle of your car pretty much on that bollard that's showing you on the second part of the chicane. So we go over the line, fastest lap of the race so far on the medium tyres. And that's good because we're obviously gaining on P1 slightly. So yeah, his lap two, I don't think was 100% perfect, but we're definitely gaining on. You can see the gap is down to 1.5 seconds and we're pushing on here. We're going to fast forward the action on lap four as we see Ollie racing behind us, just staying with us now. His tyres are starting to fade. And we've got P1 that we're just gradually gaining. You can see on the Delta, it goes down to like 1.3, up to 1.3, nearly 1.4, back down to 1.2. And we are definitely gaining time on P1 as we come to the chicane before going the pit entry. And you can see we're at 1.2 seconds. We do that reasonably well, and we're going to both pit at this stage. Now, I was tempted, you can see, I was tempted to stay out then and think I was going to think about doing the 5 5 split. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go for the undercut because it might obviously pit him with him just in case Ollie Racing was on the medium tyres and, I, I, and we got in traffic. I wasn't 100% sure at this stage, obviously. I was, I was convinced he was on the soft tyres, but yeah, just to make sure I followed P6's strategy and to see if we can catch him up. Luckily for myself, coming out the pit lane, we managed to come out just ahead of P8 and P9, so that worked out really nice. However, we do have a driver in P5 there who is not pitted yet, so he's going to probably hold us up a bit i don't know what tires he's on and um, we're going to just talk about a little bit of racecraft in a minute as we come and approach him because um, there is some things that i i try and point them out to people to help them out because i think this driver in p5 actually costs himself time in this race and it's not with myself this incident actually is going to help me out and um, you can see it's going to give me an advantage but i think for for p5 if he really played this smart he could have give himself a bit better you know time overall in the race but yeah it, there's some battles you don't really want to fight he knows that the driver behind him has just come out of the pits and he's the leader of the race because he was leading the race and you know p1 to p1 and 2 haven't just randomly dropped down to p6 it's because we've pitted so you can also see how much faster p6 is and how fast he's gaining on him i mean you can see in the look at the difference there he's also right he's right up behind him now p6 and this is where i think p5 should have used a bit of common sense so you can see p6 is going to go for the move on the inside now this is where p5 in my view racecraft just give it a little lift tuck into the slipstream take the perfect line for this game but he fights it and this is just it's not worth doing because all you're doing is you're slowing down your own race so he fights that loses a bit of time that gives myself the slipstream you look how much time they lost and it's lost about half a second there so he's now gone into the pits off the medium tires and that is what i'm saying it is just not worth yourself losing six seven temps or eight temps just to 
fighting position you're not battling with. I, and some people will argue this, but I'm trying to help you out because if he did what I said, he would have gained himself six attempts in the race, which could have then bring him out ahead of other drivers, which then might loot, like save himself three or four seconds in the race. It's all about, you know, you, you've got to race for the whole race, not just for that instant. But now we're catching up to P2 and we're going to see the complete opposite of that. This driver in P2 is too generous. I think he's way too kind and really... He should have just done it a little bit, um, a little less, a little less um, aggressively what he does because he actually loses out quite badly. But we can see now I'm chasing down the lead and now we're in the slipstream and now we've got a battle on for the lead of this race. This is going to be quite entertaining. Can we find a way past him though? One thing I do notice is that with the brake bias I was running with the front tyre wear, it's very difficult through some of the corners where the downforce is dependent when you're following enough drivers. So we see P2. He's going to lift completely off the throttle here. Now, I think that's a bit aggressive. I don't think he needed to do it. Now, obviously, he hasn't pitted yet. But I think he could have done that a little bit, you know, just a little gentle lift, say, here on the track. Let P2 go and then let myself go on the next straight. That's how I would have done it. You know, there's no, you don't need to lose yourself three or four seconds just to let, you know, people through like that. You can just do it smart. Just a little lift off the throttle into the braking zone. Let them go up the inside. Tuck into their slipstream. And then let the next car go and you lose maybe what seven tenths or something like that and you might actually gain a bit of time because you're in the slipstream but yeah he was a, he was too kind not that i'm complaining because you know it helps us out in the battle for the whip for the lead here but it was a little bit too generous that as we go through to the final corner now and we're right in that slipstream but you can see i'm having a lot of understeer i, I keep if you keep an eye on the um, accelerator te the, the telemetry on the accelerator you will see that coming out of some of these corners I'm having to lift off the throttle every now and then like it's where that understeer kicks in when you're in the dirty air it, you just can't stay on the power and it's so frustrating because I know I can drive faster than what we're doing here because I, I can do 53s on, when I'm on my own I can do a 53.9 or something like that 53.8 in the Peugeot but when you're following another driver you just have to keep being very patient on the throttle you can see we're getting the benefit of the slipstream on the straights that's clear so we're trying to try and our hardest to save our tires at the same time here so we're not trying to overdrive because i was thinking maybe try and save our tires for the end but P p1 is driving very well i have to say really smooth he's not making any mistakes he's keeping the car exactly where he should put it and you can see i'm having a bit of difficulty trying to save him so we're sk skipping ahead to about a lap further on as we just drove that lap pretty much around three four attempts difference and no real gain on him as we come through here you can see he makes a little bit of an error there not a massive error though but he did get a little bit late on the brakes there so maybe his tire wear is starting to affect him a little bit as we come through here trying to get as much speed through this um fast chicane as possible and then into the next braking zone the two places where we've got to try and do an overtake pretty much are before the chicane or turn one they are pretty much the only opportunities you're going to get and i run a little bit wide through there again you can see following the driver in front i'm trying my hardest here i have to say i was really trying to push while trying to look after the tires while trying to line the car up and deal with that dirty air so we got we get a little bit of understeer through there and again into this braking zone trying to take this corner as well as we can because if you notice there the hundred board has been took out and that is kind of the brake reference I use. So that 100 board had been took out. So I was doing it more by sight in terms of just judging the distance by what it looks like. Um, not really affecting us too much because it's not too hard to do. But then we go fast forward this action now on lap 9 as we've got two laps to go. We're getting very, very close in certain areas. But every time we come to some of the corners, you can see I have to get off the throttle. As I'm trying to be aggressive on the throttle, I'm just having to give it a little lift. But as we come into this corner here now, you're going to see P1. He goes a bit too deep there. I'm going to try and get a nice undercut here and see if we can get really close to him, which we do. We're in a perfect position now to possibly go for a move if we can get the slipstream on the chicane. So working our way through here, staying as close as I can while staying on the throttle through there. It's very difficult, I have to say, um, when your tyres are starting to fade. You can see our tyres are starting to look a bit secondhand there. Taking this corner as smoothly as we can, trying not to be overly aggressive, just trying to get on the throttle as early as we can. You can see again that little lift of throttle that I had to do just because if I stayed on it, I'd run the risk of running wide. Maybe I should have been a bit more aggressive than a bit more brave because you can see if I didn't do that, we might have had a really nice run here. We get a nice run anyway, and he just defends absolutely perfect. Credit to P1 because he just plants the car in the middle. I can't go on the inside, I can't go on the outside. There's nothing I can really do in that situation. So 
He's driving really well. We're trying our best to see if we can find a way past him. And obviously, I want to keep this really clean. We don't want to just send it and push him off the track because that's not my style. I'd rather do a nice, clean overtake and make this a race, you know, worthwhile, you know, a fun race. And I do really enjoy these races like this where we're hunting someone down. We started P4. We lost a bit of time at the start and we've managed to catch it back up. But at the moment, we're finding it very difficult to find the place to overtake. And this track is a very difficult track to overtake on. Um, there is straights leading into corners and stuff, but it's also aero dependent on some tra on some of the corners which lead into them. So it's very hard. We're on the final lap. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can put them under pressure. We just again have to lift off the throttle every time we go to get on the power I'm into the braking zone. Here, trying to be as smooth as I can. Both of us exactly the same lines through them corners. He takes a bit of a tight line there. I try and get the exit speed from the corner, which we actually managed to do. We get a nice exit from that corner, working our way now down into the next braking zone. You can see he kind of goes defensive, but again, we're just too far back to really send it up the inside there. We take that tighter line there to try and avoid some of that dirty air and get on the power earlier. We nearly run onto the gravel there as I do try and be a bit more aggressive on the throttle. But again, through here, trying to make sure we go as flat as we can. But again, I had to give it a little lift. I didn't feel confident enough. Um, I think next time we do this race, I'm gonna run the brake bias on the softs at minus three and try and look after the rear tires a bit more with the downshifting um, because you can see that the rear grip is still okay at this stage of race so I think I could afford to run minus three and maybe try and look after them front tires a little bit better but working our way down the, for our final overtaking opportunity you can see that we're just not close enough to go for the move we're just a bit too far back and we're just gonna have to see if he makes a mistake through the chicane we're trying to take it as smooth as I can aggressive through there we actually gained a bit on him that time if we had done that on a previous lap we might have been able to get in a position after this corner to go through moving to turn one so coming through the final corner he's driven a really well driven race we've done as well as we could do i think they're starting from p4 and managing to catch p1 up and put him under pressure so a fun race and they're the type of races that i really do enjoy on gt sport and i hope you lot enjoyed it as well if you did remember to hit that thumbs up i'm going to be back with more live streams once my tooth is okay hopefully it won't take long hopefully we'll be back in a day or two but if not I'll keep the video content coming as much as I physically can. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all too soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.